Welcome to the Kinjas Podcast. Here we will discuss dance, life, and whatever the f we want. <laughs> Folks, welcome back or welcome to Kinja's Movement in the Shadows. I'm your host, Ben. And I'm Anthony. And we have our very special friend back in the pod. We have Chinese-American singer-songwriter, one-fourth of K-pop group FX. She's a lover of movement, a lover of llamas, <laughs> and lover of her dog, Jack-Jack. We have Amber Lou back. Hey, bio, 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 Amber Lou. Bio, bio, bio. Oh, what's up, everybody? I'm Amber Lou. Thanks what's for up, me back. Amber? I'm I'm so happy. This is our first in-person yes. podcast because we were on Zoom due mm-hmm. to the COVID thing the back in 2020. Yes. And um, so we already had your origin story from mm-hmm. that one because we always like to you know get to know the person, where you're from, and the whole thing. So if you guys are just tuning into this one. And you're curious about all that, go back to the other episode, listen to all that. But we want to pick back up with, um, yeah, you know, how you got through the rest of COVID in 2020. You were gaming a lot. You were Mm -hmm. working on music, um, the whole thing. And and here we are. Yeah, you were just you were just working on an album that was announced during that time. But now it's already out. out Well, there's more than one album. Yeah, there's two. Two albums out. You thought it was one, it's two. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so give us grinding. give us the cliff notes. Give us just a life update since uh, October 2020 when it was the last time you came on the yes. podcast. So man, okay, October 2020, when we spoke, I, I released um the show that I was um hosting called Awesome Stupid Questions, where we actually like talked about a lot of different topics other than voting. Uh, uh sorry, with voting, and then there was uh gaming, mental health. Mm. um like uh, animation we so we we released that whole series um and then after that i got a call and i went to china for i guess r- it gets roughly about a year um i was uh a mentor on a program called chong chong it's like chong? a chong sorry i was like, I was like chong. yeah it's called chong that's that's how chong. people that's how people have, but it's uh but it's a uh, there it's a contestant show where they uh there's a, just like almost a hundred contestants trying to get into this boy group whoa so i was mm. a mentor on that show and then i decided to you know i i haven't been back in a long time and when you eliminate people are you like you are chuang for this <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you are chuang for this. you are the chuang person <laughs> uh, it was <laughs> also <laughs> why am i afraid right now <laughs> I was actually mentoring them like uh, the the voting was actually all done by the fans and the viewers of the show and I was just trying to like kind of just giving them like advice on like not only like how to I guess practice and like how to grow but also like with me I feel like a lot of like our job is like it's it's all mental too mm-hmm. it's like where you want to go what your goals are so um a lot a big blast from the past type of like energy going on when I was on that show a lot of the boys were like Wait, but I feel like this. I'm like, oh, I felt like that too. Mm. Like what? Well, give us an example. So it's kind of like that being lost, and like especially when you're um, on these shows, it's extremely like, it's just busy. You're going from shoot to shoot to practice, and then you have like three days to do, like do a performance. I think for like, for us in our career now, like when we have like a day or two, it's like ah, it's not a lot of time, but we can do it, right? Mm. But these kids are like twenty. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of like, oh man, that's how like, I I wouldn't know how to do with that at that age. So it was just kind of like, wow. I, I started like thinking about a lot of the stuff that I went through, um, and then uh, I stayed in China um, for a couple more months. Came back to the states for a little bit, just work on the album, then went back, and I just came back a couple months ago. So uh, my Mandarin's improved significantly, nice. which I'm very proud of. Uh, I can talk with my mom now with like no problem because wow. that's like been one of my goals. Like that's one dope. of my lifelong goals is to actually like to hold a conversation with my mom. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like, I finally I can like understand everything she's saying. So it's a lot of like just connecting back with my family, my roots, my culture. Um, and then also like now that I'm back, I'm like, wow, I want to, I want to be a student again. Mm-hmm. And, like John always mm-hmm. says this to me. He's like, you have to be a good student, like master the art of student. I think it's like, is that one of your guys' things? That is one of the that things. is one of the things. <gasps> one there of the things. Oh, yeah. oh, you like master. that one? I like it. I like it. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> make a, can you just make a? Do you have a shirt? 
Oh, master okay. the art of student. Master the art of student. You want to collab on a shirt? Yes. We'll collab on a shirt. Okay. We don't. We don't really make. We got a hashtag. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag, hashtag. Well, you know that was the hashtag for the dojo, and we kind of mm. closed it. But, oh. hey, not, not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, Let's focus on you. Let's focus on you. You know. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I just like. I was just kind of like. I'm just like the whole period of like. I think last time Ben, when we spoke, I was just trying to like figure out how to like trust my body, trust like what I've learned mm -hmm. over the past couple of years. Now I'm actually kind of like understanding. What yeah. I'm trying to tell myself, it's like um, when like my manager was like, oh, that you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet or whatever. And then I realized, oh, that back then, yeah, I was not ready. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm having that like epiphany right now. So I'm like just really not only just focusing on like learning again, but also, you know, having a life. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things that the last conversation that I got was you were already in process with sort of everything uh, that you had experienced and it being so fast paced. And then there is this global closure and then it gives you some time to sort of, um, yeah, get into your own head of what do you really want to do? Uh, what do you really, uh, what are you really passionate about and how do you want to express that? Um, and I'm sure, yeah, you know, being in an industry, the music industry in and of itself is already, I can imagine, um, there's a lot of pressures to be a certain way, uh, act a certain way, put out this type of music or whatever. And then um, and then you kind of coming into, you know, your your own kind of, you know, space where you can kind of be like, okay, let me, let me take some time. Like, do I really want to um, focus on these things or do I really want to put myself out in this way or that. And I think I was really, I felt like I caught you in a time where you were figuring things out and even yeah. kind of taking time for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you were just like, you know, I'm going to game because I enjoy yeah. this. And then, you know, I know you were heavy on Twitch and then you were also in the process of, you know, music. And then, yeah, when we had the complex, I would mm -hmm. catch you at the gym <laughs> working out and like, you know, and then you were on the side still dancing mm -hmm. and things like that. So it was really cool to kind of see you in that process mm -hmm. and, and, I'm sure you've been through a whole, I mean, that's been almost yeah. two years now since even then. And and you just got back from China yeah. you said a couple of months ago. So what was that kind of the dash in between the last time we spoke from where you were at being kind of quarantined here in LA and that whole chapter of like, you know, you going out to China to work again and then not I think being back. I, I've been trying to figure out like, uh, and this is something that I was talking about with my, like my, my Twitch uh, audience. I was like, I know I talk about a lot of like, be yourself, you know, be true to who you are. You know, you can, you can only be yourself. You can't be somebody else. But like, well, now what does that even mean? You know, mm -hmm. because I think being 15, starting in this industry and just being thrown in with You were wolves, 15 was, when you started? Yeah, I was 15 Holy when I started. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like, uh, you know, even with dance too, like, it's just like, I was just thrown choreography couple basics and then here you go now go stand on the stage yeah now it's and then i realized that i didn't do that with singing and i'm like that's my whole career is like to be a singer mm -hmm. and i was like wow i really haven't like i've taken a couple lessons here and there um i've uh i've i've never really like studied and like you know i, I didn't go to college mm -hmm. so i've been interested in this like okay Oh, I need to actually I need to actually slow down and be okay with slowing down because I think during the pandemic I felt like okay I'm just gonna do it and slow down because there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. But now that everything's picking back up and the pace is again fast as hell, like how do I actually be at peace while I'm doing all this? Because mm. I I've done I've done it so many times where I'm just like work 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 burnout. Yeah. And then during that burnout, I feel like, I feel like, man, why did I do that? Why, like, why couldn't I just like have like taken a day off? And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to be okay the next round. And then I do that same thing again, work, 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 burnout again. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's just kind of like, okay, I need to start actually being realistic with not only my, my, I guess the reality of the world, 
but also with myself and where I am physically because I'm I'm almost thir- I'm almost thirty. <laughs> wow. I'm almost thirty. Dang, so, you don't look a day over nineteen thank and a you. half. <laughs> I, think I like being carded now. <laughs> I know the feeling now. Yeah. But it's like, but also, man, like, oh, I should have known better. I should, oh, I should have like uh, done th- like that. All that regret and all mm-hmm. that like worry and all that anxiety. Um, I've been really dealing with it because at like certain points, I just be sitting and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a break today. It's gonna be chill, no work, even though it's a weekday. Um, it'll be good for my mental health. But then I would spend hours being anxious for not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Totally, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'd be mm-hmm. like, okay, because I can't do it today, I'll do this tomorrow, I'll do this tomorrow. Then I start thinking about work for tomorrow. Like you're planning your work yeah, day the I next totally day. Feel yeah. That, yeah. So it's like, how do I? I've been so like, it's been trained in my head work 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 and not working is so weird um and now that i'm in the heat of like being busy right now how do i be at peace and also like not burn out creatively because when i'm at the studio every day i'm just like yeah. okay i'm trying to create something new i'm trying to find new words find new melodies okay think about production okay with this with this marketing plan but then it's like it's so many thoughts and then i'm just like how do I shut this off? How I'm, do I you know what? I'm so glad we're having this conversation because I think, um, one, maybe it's a testament to how awesome your entire journey <laughs> has been. Also, while you're back here. But um, uh, oftentimes, uh, even for myself, if I'm looking for a particular type of inspiration or a lot mm-hmm. of the people that end up listening or following us or mm-hmm. subscribing to us, right? Hearing the journey of like what it might take to get from A mm-hmm. to B is yeah. one of the most powerful kind of like uh, mm-hmm. themes and lessons that people can witness yeah. right a- a- in order to find some sort of uh natural line for their own story as mm-hmm. the hero of their own character but to have somebody come on who has done it and has kind of got there <laughs> but to be able to talk about step two or or, yeah. or if anything step 1.5 before the next yeah. one i think is actually a very very huge mm-hmm. thing because uh one of the kind of like sub themes that i've been discovering in my own life and also in parallel with some of the guests that we brought on too is now we we just happen to be older we're in a different season of kinjas we're in a different season of the podcast we've all grown as people and have Mm -hmm. endured something very intense like the pandemic and we've all kind of faced this turning of the page whether we liked it or not you know what i mean but to discover especially as adults like where our new boundaries are yeah and how to like you said find that inner peace for ourselves while Mm -hmm. still being able to hold on to or or project the identity that we had created and fostered for ourselves in our more formidable years our younger Mm -hmm. years that's a huge thing even for us even for kids right like Mm -hmm. imagine us like now in our 30s and 40s still trying to outdo our artist selves in our 20s 30s and 40s well, you know, I I'm you. represent the 40s category. You what? I represent since I, when? Since last year, I'm turning 41. And it was a were, sick birthday. You were Hawaii. like like three years older than me, like my sister's I, age or something. I thank you for that. I thank you, and I love you. I love your skin. You look great. <laughs> this skin is good. Yeah, I'm doing well, my best. I think it's like people are afraid of change because change is like it's scary, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but totally. like the pandemic, it's just. It's like it's gonna hit you out of left field and or right field or all fields and you just like i think it's like how do you adapt because especially in an industry where like trends are always like changing the new what's the new thing on tiktok okay what's this other platform dude i remember i was like talking about like zanga in myspace in live journal right <laughs> yeah. like yeah. and then it's like how we've lived through all these things like and then when i talk to like my my manager and like my older mentors who've been in the industry since like the like 80s 70s mm-hmm. it's like a whole other game and every like like every bit of advice that i've gotten is like that the one like common like point was always like you can't go crazy and just go full force without like like taking a moment for yourself Mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter and it's like that anxiety of like oh we are wrong or we are right because everything's now just so public because of social media it's like how like maybe i can take a step before like joining on every single platform like hopping on every bandwagon like take a step back there's so much information let's let like a lot of fake news like that kind of stuff um it's just kind of like step back and just breathe for a little bit because i think there is that like i have it like that fomo we always joke yeah, about fomo yeah. 
and it's like, oh, that person succeeded, and then I should succeed totally. too. But it's like you are your own, uh, you are your own, like you're your own opponent. You're your yeah, own yeah. enemy. If you, you, well, not enemy. Like you just got to be better than who you are. Yesterday. Absolutely. You know, I think what what something that you're touching on is something that I, you know, have been thinking personally a lot about is like information overload that we are, are we're constantly bombarded by information, whether it be fake news, entertainment, what's mm -hmm. cool, what's not, what's the latest thing that's canceled, what's the mm -hmm. next thing that you got to be on. And there's so much that... <laughs> it's stressful you know yeah. and and if you let it just hit you and you're just receiving it all it's very easy to get stressed out and something that you, you kind of were touching on that um i think is really important you know you're talking about you know yeah like the onset of like the zangas and then before myspace was friendster so like yeah. all these new things oh gotta get this new thing new thing new thing and this is the best th these are the best tools to stay connected with the world whereas like you know, little like, do we remember prior to that, maybe 10 years before yeah. that, we were memorizing phone numbers and dialing up, <laughs> you know, pay phones because we just remembered yeah. 50 people's phone numbers. In order for me to go see you, I had to go to your house and yeah. hang out. And I think, you know, what I'm trying to get at is the sense of community that, uh, you know, existed pre-internet. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important to preserve that to whatever degree that we mm -hmm. can. Because I think we're using now the technologies that are available at our fingertips as our, oh, this is how I stay connected to my community. I, I follow them. I, I like their posts. I watch their stories. Yeah. But when's the last time you spoke to them? I'm like, well, I, yeah. I, I DM them or I commented on their post. Yeah. But like, when's the last time you actually hung out, sat down, had a meal or had a cup of coffee and really just sat and talked? Yeah. And how did you like, when was the last time you did that? I think maybe our generation, we we love doing that because that we're old school, right? We that's that's kind of how we grew up and that's the stuff that we crave. But what I fear for the younger generation is if they're not taught, hey, that's the the actual way to stay most connected mm -hmm. is to do your best to go play with your friends yeah. outside versus just like, hey, I'll see you on, you know, whatever like yeah. Roblox or I'm I don't even know what the freak that is. Minecraft. Mine, Minecraft. Minecraft. There you go. See, I'm 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 a boomer over here talking about <laughs> Roblox. Like I don't even know what it, what it is. But like, I think there's ways to, for the younger generation to learn from, and I, and I put the onus on us because mm -hmm. it really is on us to, to pass that down yeah. to be like, hey, real life human interaction, at least even picking up the phone yeah. or FaceTime at least, you know, like. Well, I, I mean, I, I just, this is a, such a, a unique and dynamic topic that has so much range because it comes so much down to you. Uh, your own experience and life perspective yeah. too, right? Mm -hmm. Like as much as I totally agree with that, but we also have to think about like, uh, totally, I get anxiety trying to pick up the next trend or trying to yeah. be hip to certain things on social media. But that's maybe also because like, I got to take care of my own family. I got to take care of my bills and pay mm -hmm. rent. I got I got everything that I got to do with my companies yeah. and all that stuff. Whereas most people that are really, really hip and trendy and doing all that stuff yeah. are still the same high school kids that we were when we were jumping on Zanga mm -hmm. and MySpace all fucking day. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't have to do all these. They live at home. Their, their life responsibilities, especially yeah. during COVID, are maybe even less. So they have the space in their own like you know, mind and yeah. the, the actual almost physical space to be able to like handle those things. Mm -hmm. Whereas I know that for sure, like we would look at it with anxiety, maybe much like um, everybody who was in a, a corporate, f f you know, Fortune 500 company was tripping out the first time they had to get a social media marketing person. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I agree. I just think that there's there's so much range to that. And totally. we just yeah. happen to yeah, be yeah. in an a, in a age group that experienced something prior. Uh, but I don't know if it's necessarily a for better or worse thing. Because the blanket statement yeah. is that, yeah. yeah. you know, if I had kids, of course, I wouldn't want them to be on their, you know, digital mm -hmm. computing tool all day. But at the same time, those random yeah. kids who are like on their iPhones or whatever all day are now making millions of dollars yeah. doing yeah. the next yeah. trend. And yeah. I'm like, wait, yeah. like I had to spend 20 years to maybe make that. Yeah. So I, the trade off seems pretty lucrative. <laughs> I, I think, but you, you, that's the word. I think trade off is kind of what's important. I think, you know, you can have the generation where it's like, yo, I remember when we just had to like walk 20 miles in the snow and that was yeah. the way, right? It's like, well, but yeah, there's a new way now. Yeah. So rather than it's called the car. 
yeah, it's called a car, yeah. you know, but like rather than thinking that my way is better than your way yeah. or our way is better than your way, it's like, hey, uh, this way is good because this is the way it, it's worked. But hey, what is that new thing yeah. that you're on? Can you teach me about that? Like I've my mom has never even asked me how to use the Internet. Yeah. And I'm like, mom, you have a smartphone. You press this button. You put that little search bar. You type in anything that you want to find. <laughs> you press enter. and It'll give you all kinds of information. She's like, that's that black magic. Dude. Yeah. She's like, Watch I don't want to know man. about that's that. Black magic. My mom literally still goes to the bank, writes checks, deposits it in. Like, I'm like, man, life would be so much easier if you just if I could just teach you something. Yeah. But I think it's that's the trade off. Ben's mom. I love Ben's mom. I love my mom, too. So sweet. And, you know, but I think. So I guess my point is this, if there was more exchanging versus yeah. my way is better than your way yeah. or you're a boomer, you're old, you don't know what's the new thing and we're just yeah. going to stay over here on our devices, yeah. you know, and I and I think we, we do know that. I yeah. mean, I think even within our, you know, audience, we have the people who are, you know, very searching for wisdom, like, mm. you know, how, how do I make it? How do I get to, you know... Uh, unlock a, a way of thinking mm -hmm. and you know that's why platforms yeah. like this where conversations can yeah. happen where mindset and just well to to know. bring it back though not to put pressure on you but no. totally to put pressure on you right now <laughs> <Feel it. laughs> okay. um you are very influential you are yes. an influencer you have a lot of people <laughs> that have heard your music that follow you follow you on twitch follow you on instagram whatever platform mm -hmm. tiktok any of it yeah point is you have a lot of people but you also and i'm, I'm gonna get really human for a second but yeah, you're also yeah. right now we're, we're talking about this theme where um especially after kind of getting that reset button of the pandemic yeah. you yeah. kind of get a chance to really look into things yourself and think mm -hmm. like where am i what do i want to do what do i want to prioritize yeah. how do i create boundaries for myself yeah. but then how do you address that kind of that anxiety you were talking yeah. about of like also still fulfilling that social responsibility that you have to everybody yeah. who follows you for everything that you've done for them so i think like one thing is i think with a lot of what i've done because like when i was really busy with fx um and then we had like a little down period um, I started vlogging. I started, you know, I even before, uh, like, like, even when Vine was still up big, um, yeah, I wasn't sure. making Vines, but I was still making Instagram videos and like these little short, like, based before what TikTok was. Yeah, yeah. I'm making yeah, yeah. little mm -hmm. videos, and then, um, and I did it because I loved it, you know. Yeah. And I was, you know, in my in my early 20s, I was like, let's shoot this, shoot this. I'm gonna edit this, and I had like all the time to just do it. And I was writing my music, like learning, and like you know, also working. Um, and you know, at the same time, like you know, I think as you mentioned, like the responsibilities that we have now as an adult, like at that time I was like, what? I was like, what? 20, I was like 20 ish. And I, I was paying like rent and I was living like on my own in, in Korea. So like, I think what really burnt me out was the, the pressure to constantly do it. Like I stopped loving it. Yeah. And, like, and it's like, I know that's a very, very big like topic amongst like, a lot of us where like oh we can like, relate like oh i just i just don't love it anymore like i'm just dancing because i need to dance i need to sing because i need to sing i need to like you know go to this because I, I just need to pay the bills but it's like how do you find that love again for it mm. and it's like kind of like when i see my my goddaughter she's six she's just like do you want to play games can i show you how to how to make oh, she plays minecraft so cute oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and she's like and i don't know it's like wow like, how do I find that, like, that innocent child, mm. like, that, like, the that childlike wonder, the yeah. childlike wonder that, like, um, what is it called? Night, the night, my English is so bad now. And the naiveness, like, the na na naivety, naivety, yeah. naive, naive, naivety, that word, yeah, naive, that one, that right English, there. very hard <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, the na naivety, the mm -hmm. naivety yeah, to, yeah, yeah. like, you know, just like, not like, obviously, like, we all have these like walls that we've built up over the years because we've been like hurt, you know, we've done this thing and it failed. So we have like our traumas and our baggage as adults, but then how do we search for that innocence again? So like uh, one thing I've been doing, um, uh, I've been taking um, one-on-ones again for dance. And then I was so afraid to freestyle because I just was like, you know, I grew up with like, you have to be cool. You gotta pop and you gotta like, Whoo! Dang, that's hella fresh right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, but it's like, but I, I always had this thing. Like, I was like, I'm not a dancer. I just, I just, you know, flail around a little bit. But then now it's like, wait, how about I just dance? Because I just, 
actually want to. Um, and I had that idea since the last time we talked, but, mm-hmm. and, but it's just like, now I'm putting that into like actual, like into actual, like m- actual doing stuff, actual actions mm-hmm. and actually trying to with, within me trying to act everything out and like commit to it. Also keep my, like my head in check mm-hmm. that like, I see like, um, uh, Sora was like, okay, now I want you to just bounce don't just freestyle with just bounces. I'm like, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> how do you just bounce? And I would see, and she was like, okay, now switch it to uh, to a rock. And I'm like, I would just like catch myself like screwing yeah. up like my, myself. So I was just like, okay, uh, what's wrong with my head that's making me like psych myself out? Or like in the studio when I'm like, just like, like there's a lot of writers that just like are so talented that can just be like, oh no, oh yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, Okay. okay. Yeah, that sounded that sound great. Uh, hold on, let, let me check. And then I would just I would just be like checking up all like the, the lyrics I wrote. I'm like, okay, just put a piece here in my head. Mm-hmm. I songwrite in silence. That's, wow. that's what I do. I just sit and I just like have my notes or my, my notebook. I would just be writing and tapping and stuff. I'm like, mm. but why, why, can't, why is that making me anxious? Mm-hmm. Is it like me comparing myself to people? What I see mm-hmm. on social media, right. what I see other people succeeding in, and I'm just failing in this. So like, but the also the thing that I had to learn is that now I'm an indie artist. I have a business to run. I have people to pay. I have, um, you know, I have to, you know, also take care of my dog and like make sure that like the trash is taken out on Tuesdays. That's right. You, you gotta know? take out the trash. So it's like okay, now that I have all these things and then I also have this social obligation, how <laughs> do I balance everything? Hmm. And I think in the end, it comes to like, number <coughs> one, making full circle. It's like, I have to do things because I want to do it or it's just me like putting up a face, like a face again. That's a facade. Yeah. Like there is a self-discipline that I have to have. And, but I also have to want to do that. Yeah, totally. And you yeah. always really just have to check yourself. Like, Again, like like two days ago, I was sitting on, at my desk and I was like, okay, I, I gotta do this, this. And I just like whispered to myself and like, I, I act like a crazy person sometimes. And I was just like, I sat here for 30 minutes doing nothing, but worrying about something that I had to do tomorrow. Yeah, you Why, got that yeah. analysis paralysis, right? You know, analysis paralysis. Yo, that shit happens to me all the time. All the time. It's so weird. Same thing as, as a creative, right? Um, especially when you, when you've got too much else on your mind. Yeah. I think before, like when you know, when it was in my early twenties, anytime I heard a song, yeah. I could visualize something because I wasn't stressed, and I think it's because I wasn't stressed or thinking about mm-hmm. so many other things. Yeah, that I just let my that childlike wonder just. Yeah. I, I just let it free. Mm-hmm. So I'd hear a track. It'd be a new track or a track I never heard, blah, blah, blah. And I would start seeing things. I'll see formations, yeah. see visuals, concepts, costumes, colors, mm-hmm. lighting, camera, whatever. I would just see shit. Now, if I were to go on my entire Spotify playlist, everything in my Discover Weekly, because based off of everything I've been listening to, is all some weird, tranquil, lo-fi shit. And I realize <laughs> I only play that because I need to work. And yeah. I want to get through and I want to coast through life and I want to feel a relieved sense of pressure mm-hmm. as I continue to uphold my responsibilities as a man mm-hmm. or, or as an adult. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I totally understand how as you age, even as a creator, you only have a broader library to scrutinize further or to constantly compete against yourself with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whereas when you're in that phase of naivety in the beginning, you haven't done anything, so you have nothing to compare it to. Yeah. So it's so easy to freefully and willfully just create out of this pure passion and yeah. love and ambition for growth. Mm-hmm. But then once you actually have grown, it actually gets so difficult and suffocating. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you're just like, I think there's a period of time, like often actually, where I'm just like, oh, I, when I hear all these songs, I'm just like, okay, analyzing the melody. Okay, what well, they have like three stacks on this. They put like this reverb on this. Oh, they have, that's a new plugin. Like I would just be like listening to all these things, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I gotta, I gotta again take a step back and just enjoy it. I just right? gotta enjoy music. Yeah, and it's either like taking a break from listening to that type of music. I would just like go look at like. Oh, I really just wanted to listen to like some like Disney Channel, like Disney Channel, like 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 original hits or something like, like that. We don't talk about Bruno. I know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. talk about Bruno. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and like I don't know, I was I was watching uh I watched like Hocus Pocus. Like that was Ooh, I, I, yeah, like I just like kind of dove back into the things that were like like man, I just like this for this. And like I remember like I don't know, like I know like, as human beings we're just very critical of not only ourselves but other people. But it's like what happened to just watching a movie and just like not thinking about production for a little bit or if not thinking about oh is that okay is that actress actually acting or like do they yeah not it? scrutinizing the yeah. shit out of yeah, it yeah you're right? just kind of just like like how do you train yourself to do that again and it's like maybe it's just go outside take a walk every day and like now it's i'm i'm trying this thing where in the car i have uh since i live in the oc now and i drive out to la at least three four times a week okay in that hour going to work what do I do instead of, you know, instead of just like listening to music? I, I do like now I start doing vocal, my vocal exercises at that time. I started putting in work calls. So I like I have this system now where it's like a little bit of routine, which is actually nice because I think every day we're just kind of like, OK, what's the next project? Oh, OK, there's nothing coming in. I should work on something else. It's totally. like it's very just uh, the, the 1099 life. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the 1099 <laughs> life. <laughs> But how do I keep myself in check, like building like a routine that's not too overwhelming that I can still like, you know, tighten up some screws here and there and like just make sure that some of the, the checklists things are going away and then also like find the time to be a kid. So like today on stream, I was like, I want I, I, I made my Twitch for a reason. I, I kind of like re, redid this in my head. I was like, I do Twitch because I want to, I have to want to do it. Mm. And it's like, I love playing games. So I don't, I can't, I shouldn't get caught up in like, oh, like there's this, this really addictive like thing to look at and it's the live viewer number. Yeah, It's oh, so yeah. fun to look at, <laughs> You just, that, but yeah. it gives you anxiety at the same yeah, time. Totally. And I'm just like, fuck that. If anything, I'm proud of whatever number it is because mm -hmm. that's the number of people that came here to support me yeah. and I'm gonna try to, you know, have a good time with them. and. The new Kirby game just came out. Oh my god, I love Kirby. <laughs> Holy crap! That and, shit sounds so old to me right yeah. now. I, like I was honestly about to ask you on on some geek level stuff. Yeah. I was like, "What game are you into?" I did not expect the new Kirby game to be. The Kirby thing that... is. I have a tattoo of Kirby. Kirby no, okay, is the I respect pink, that. The pink. Yeah. Puff ball. Yeah, the one that sucks stuff up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just spits it out and stuff. Yeah. All weird. The really funny... kind of weird actually. It's <laughs> it super powerful. Weird. It's like I swallow you. You swallow things. <laughs> oh, now there's like this like thing where it, like where Kirby like uh can like so, like not swallow a car but it like kind of covers a car and then you become the car Whoa, it's so awesome oh that's cool and it's like i don't know like i'm still caught up on the kirby tag one i swallow you <laughs> I swallow. <laughs> like that's good branding right that's a t-shirt right pretty there good branding. but to make pretty it good. super like tangenty but the reason why i love kirby is because like i think something to learn from kirby is that if you take something and you learn from it so you when you when he swallows and he, he takes their abilities Whoa, so it's deep. like yes yeah, it, he sucks very, it up he you know sucks it mean? up yeah, yeah. Sucks it up, you know <laughs> but in our wow, reality yeah. it's like what happens if i can be like a sponge or like like a kirby mm -hmm. and like whatever you say to me today i could take something away from that or mm -hmm. like uh you know i learned how to i don't know bake something or you know do something new like be a kirby yeah i like that because he also yeah. spits out what he don't yeah, like what you don't like you know what i mean what you don't need <laughs> you take what you need you spit out we the all trash. have something to learn from kirby man <laughs> yeah. wow that's deep. i love it well like so you know something that you were saying <laughs> earlier about like um you know your routines and sort of taking your time when like okay, now you have this drive that you're doing you know, back and forth from LA and OC mm -hmm. and thinking about, okay, this, I could, I could just, you know, consume music and just kind of like let my mind go mm -hmm. to music or be active. And, you know, whether that's practice your vocals or take a work call or maybe sit in silence. I And the reason why I'm bringing this up mm -hmm. is because I have a similar thing mm -hmm. where Anytime I drive, I look at my drive as an opportunity for me to do something during the drive. Yeah. And um, oftentimes, 
you know, my mind wants to just learn about stuff. So I'm like, let me see what's out there. What's a good podcast? You know, what am I interested in right now? Do I want to be inspired? Do I want to learn? Do I want to get motivated? So let me find something that will kind of feed to whatever that is. Or sometimes like, you know what? I just need music right now. Mm. Or you know what? I just need to sit in silence. Or you know, I'm just going to sit and just pray and talk to God during this Mm. drive. And it, it always changes. It's not ever the same. And at least for me, that... Like it's it whatever I do during that time changes, but that thing is a routine. The yeah. thing that I do is I'm going to fill that time with something that I feel like I need for that time. Mm. And I think, you know, there's something powerful about giving yourself um, a routine for novelty. Mm. I, I don't know if I would necessarily even call that novelty per se, but just to have something in practice where I am going to routinely do something different that I feel like I need for yeah. that moment. And I think there's something there. I, yeah, I guess whether that's as creatives or um, especially when you feel that like I'm responsible for people's lives, I'm responsible to hit these deadlines. Um, uh, you know, I want to put out good stuff. I want to make sure that like I like what I do. So mm-hmm. pressure comes from all different places. Yeah. And I think, you know, and I'd, I'd love to hear, it especially from you, just with that pressure, because you know, we even talked about it in yeah. the last time we talked. Um, but, you know, it, it, you know, if I could say you, you yeah. were saying you've kind of learned some new things, implemented some new things in your life yeah. to kind of allow you to release that. How, how do you sort of deal with like sort of emptying and, and moving forward? I think my biggest thing was to learn to say no. Mm-hmm. And that's hard because... Yeah. Like, I'm such a, like, yeah, let's do it. I'm down to do it. I'll, like, grind. I'll, I'll like, get it done at, like, 4 a.m. Like, it's, it's like, because that's the environment that I grew up in, is that we don't rest until the project is done, whether it takes two days, a week, mm-hmm. or whatever, or we have to finish it all tonight. So, but then I also felt like, okay, I'm now I'm feeling the actual physical repercussions for, of that. Like I have like, I have really bad um, insomnia sometimes. Uh, my anxiety goes crazy. I had a series of panic, atta- panic attacks before. Um, and it's like, you know, the mental health aspect is number, like I can't push it enough. It is, it is a thing, you know, there's like, if you can't get your mind like healthy, how can you, go do what you need to do. So part of that mental health thing was saying no, because I knew I was overloading myself constantly because I'm, I'm very thankful to have a job because again, 1099 life, when you get a job, you're like, hell yeah. Yeah. But then again, with that whole burnout and like, I, I, I was like, I'm actually like quite proud of myself and I'm trying to take that as a win too of like, Oh, I was able to accomplish that that much in that amount of time but let's not do that again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, mm-hmm. um, and I think, I think I told my team at one point, I was like, hard no. And then they would ask me, I'm like, no. And I think it's like standing firm in that and being okay with that. Because when I used to say no, I would cave in later on and be like, ah, oh, no, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll do it. And then mm-hmm. I would kind of just like, wait, why did I do that? Oh, I don't really care about it. It was, this is whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Right, really prioritizing what was important to me. Right now, it's like I'm I'm really unhealthy right now, so I'm like getting back into that. So I'm prioritizing that first, and then my training, and then also um, and then my work. So everything has to go. So right now, the way I I organize my schedule is that my work revolves around right now my my physical recovery and my, my mental recovery, and and then after a while when like I'm I'm okay, I can start evening that out, and then like. Uh, like my doctor says it all the time right now you need to come in like twice a week later on you can come in once a month but right now it's twice a week mm. so it's really prioritizing that because when, when you say doctor uh, uh oh mean? right now uh, my chiropractor and then i have my therapist and then i have to now actually go see like an actual like general one because i actually haven't gotten a checkup mm. like and i've been so busy i haven't gotten like a checkup in like years so i'm just like ah i need to do that but because i still have to keep working and this ball is still i can slow down and I told my team, no, let's not do those jobs. I need to, I really need to take care of myself right now because if I, I've like, you know, we've all suffered injuries from whatever yeah. it may be. It sucks. Just 
just like not yeah. being able to do what you can do and mm -hmm. it's like okay how what pre precautions can i take whether it's training or uh you know you know i think a lot of the stuff that happens within the industry for me it's everything so fast that you just you don't know what's going on so you just kind of throw your body around like i was dancing the other day and i was like i'm so tired and i just got super sloppy and like that's just how i feel when mm -hmm. i get burnt out so mm -hmm. luckily this time I, I caught myself before a full burnout and i was like okay go back into health mode because this is not sustainable mm. I, I think that's really powerful what you just said there because i think one that's already revolutionary for me to talk about <laughs> scheduling and working your day, your routine, your lifestyle around your physical and mental health versus mm -hmm. uh, trying to schedule your physical and mental health into your yeah. lifestyle. Because I, I think yeah. that has a hu huge difference in understanding. Mm -hmm. And then two, I'm like fully fucking amazed by everything that you're like saying and, and putting out. Because at the end of the day, you're talking about how you went into this industry yeah. and this hustle at age 15. And I think that is insane. I, I honestly think that's wild. Like, I, I, like I you're in a category, <laughs> you're in a category where you have to unlearn things. Yeah, and you've doubled your time from yeah. 15 to almost 30 yeah. now. That's and crazy. that's different because I feel like one, and you were talking about like you didn't necessarily go to college or anything because you were so deep in hustle. We were spending our late teens and early 20s semi prepping for like the life hustle after yeah. the fact and you are you had already been in it for nearly seven years at this point mm -hmm. by the time we were graduating you know what i mean and and, and that's a totally different thing so so I, I guess i'm just sharing the weight of what you're saying is actually more powerful than you might be yeah. pulling it off in, in, in your in your speech because i'm like this is wild like you've been doing this for half of your life what's so interesting is that something that i've also like I think an insecurity that I've been learning to like get over is that, you know, I, 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 I recognize that I am, a, a, I'm very blessed. I like started really young. I got to like, you know, number one, a lot of people knew who I was. Um, people still know me for who I am. I still have a career even after like my peak. It's just now like, like, I think there's this, this, this insecurity within me that's like, oh but i don't deserve it the imposter you know? syndrome yeah i don't deserve it and i th i thought like i th it's been the past maybe like year that i'm like i have to be proud of what i did because i think when uh there was a lot of like um this internet gossip going on and stuff and um it just and a lot of people were just like you know like hate comments are just really easy just to zone in on mm -hmm. And even though this is just one person, you know, I don't know them. They don't know anything about me. They just wanted to say, like, you know, your stuff is crap or whatever it may be. Fuck them. You know, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's like, I am one thing I'm learning is like, why do I take that so personally? Mm -hmm. Why why am I so insecure about it? And I realized it's because I felt like I didn't deserve anything that I did. And whether it may be, you know, like the label or my, my, my group or whatever it may be, it's still like I had to put my effort into it and I have to be proud of that. And like, I think one thing that, um, I'm always, I'm always trying to stay humble, but it, I think comes to a point where it's like, almost like you push yourself down too much that, okay, yeah, I don't deserve this, but it's more like, what's the healthy, like, like humble mentality to have. It's like, I'm proud of what I have done, what I'm doing and what I, and the opportunities that I have right now, but also like, I'm, I know I'm not the shit. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not the best because the biggest room in the world is for improvement, you know? Ooh, so, that's good. and that's like, that's where I think it's again, that mental check every once in a while to mm -hmm. be all like, what do I want to accomplish? Is this realistic for me? Also, where's my, again, now being older, like where's my body at? Can my can my can my neck do this again? I don't think it can. It's like cracking right now. Okay, that's something I gotta <laughs> put on the checklist now. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like slowly just making a list of things. I remember like the past uh, past three months I've been back. Top of my list was go back to therapy, uh, work on my body, get back into training, uh, finish this uh, this next album that I'm doing. Um, I'm already like 
I think staying on everything, I've accomplished more than 80%, which I thought would have been done probably at like at the end of the year. So it's like, I'm going to take that as a win, yeah. you know, yeah, and totally. I'm going to keep like having the steady pace, but also because I've been working my whole life, I'm, I think I need to take time for myself. Um, you know, people always think like with entertainment, oh, you're just having fun. You're just, you know, and I, when I heard, when I heard that, I was like, I'm actually not having fun. Wow. You know, I'm not having fun dancing and singing anymore i'm just recording because i can because i know how to do it yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a quote unquote professional at it now but then now it's again that relearning of i actually want to put out content and put out music that i love doing yeah i think i was just lying to myself all these years and just again bringing back that childlike wonder and like just having fun with it because life is really freaking short and it's mm -hmm. and just live what live out what you want to do you know i think is and don't don't let other people stop you for that yeah you know i, I remember in our previous conversation you you had uh talked about how your your parents were supportive of you um doing music because you were already like a straight a student like you were mm -hmm. already doing well in school mm -hmm. or they knew you were capable and smart we're mm -hmm. like okay go ahead like you're you're a smart person. If that doesn't work out, we know academics will yeah. always work. And I think your parents kind of had that that trust in you because you had already proven to them I'm a hard yeah. worker. And then you kind of took that into you know yeah taking it into entertainment and the arts. And then your work ethic from a ch from a child to you know now an adult, it, it's just evolved into something else. But the 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 same amount of grit that you put in as a child still is here today maybe even more and i think at this point as as an adult you're able to um yeah recognize things like burnout because sometimes people don't even recognize burnout that's yeah. some people are just you just gotta work yeah, through grind, that the grind yeah. mentality, like those grind exactly guys, like and, that whole, I, I, and and i think you know i mean you know maybe now you know people are much that's more, me <laughs> that isn't that isn't <laughs> that is you this is for you and this conversation yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean like really though like i think you know we have this cultural um yeah, the the praise is for the people who work hard and never stop, and mm -hmm. then the people who uh, take a rest are like, oh, okay, I guess yeah, you, this is not yeah. for you. This you can't handle this level of work, and 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 I think you know to be honest, I think there's room for both. I, I think yeah. both can learn from each other. I learn yeah. from people who are the grinders or the yeah. the ones I'm like, holy crap, how do you have the bandwidth for all that? Yeah, maybe I need a, you know what I mean, and and I I need that for me because mm -hmm. I think. In all honesty, my my tendency is to be like, oh, like I just want to like do stuff that I enjoy, stuff that I'm passionate mm -hmm. about. And not everybody has the luxury to do their passion projects. Yeah. Um, but some of us are fortunate to find like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I love what I do and then I'm good at it. And then because I'm passionate about it, I'm going to put that extra, yeah. you know, extra effort into it and stuff. And, you know, I think just even as you're talking, you know, where you're at now, listening to your body. Uh, knowing, okay, I need, I need, you know, therapy, something I need to prioritize because I got to get my my mental health right, and then I already know how to put in the work when it comes to work and create mm -hmm. and things like that. And I think one thing that I, I I feel that comes across from just you know these conversations with you, you know, the people who follow your journey, um, who are your fans, I think because you give them just you in every way that they don't feel like. I mean, no, no mm -hmm. disrespect to any other yeah. artist or quote unquote celebrity, but you give you, it, it, it's mm -hmm. not this, like, let me give you my polished me and my, yeah. my, you know, glamorous, you know, whatever performance yeah. me, but more of just you in all forms. And, and even you coming on to something like mm -hmm. this to talk so freely and, and candidly, I think it just gives whoever is following your journey to be like, wow, she's a real person who struggles in the way that I struggle. Uh, but she, I look up to her cause I, I appreciate her work, her art and all that. And uh, I mean, this came across in our previous combo too, but I'm yeah. just saying it's, this is really just kind of like an overflow of just yeah. that and your growth. I'm like, I'm always like thinking that, you know, I, I could be some, I, I could put up a front, 
you know, that's it's a choice that I want to make. If it's like, if I want to be myself, do I want do? It's like everything that you put out, like that I do with my music. It, it's there's there's cho- there's decisions that have to be made. Okay, um, some decisions are fueled by okay, this might be received better with a wider audience. This one actually, okay, this one's actually means something to me. It's like now I have to know how to make those choices and not regret it. And um, I, I honestly, like, I, I always say I don't have regrets, but it's like, there, oh, have been close, close regrets. And I'm always taking it as, okay, once I find that, like, emotion in somewhere in my body, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to learn from it. I need this to happen for me to learn. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think it's never been in, in me to just be all like, Yes, I am successful. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was my, just, I'm from the Valley. So Valley Relaxing comes eight, out. 818, you know? I'm from the Valley too. Well, yeah, <laughs> I remember we got Ben talks like that when the microphones were off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the real yes. way I talk. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I, I don't want to put, I think it's exhausting to put up a front. Yeah. Because I think when I was thrown into it, I, I was putting up a front and I didn't even know I was. Mm. And again, that unlearning thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, wait, maybe wait do i like i think there's always like this search for identity and it's like i don't think i think i'm tired of searching for identity and identity i just Mm. think i just want to just learn about myself day by day i might change i might learn more things um and i think it goes going full circle full circle full circle like change is scary yeah but it's like am i going to be scared every day like, do I want to be scary every day? Like, no fear, let's go. So I'm like, you know, I, I, you need to be your own, like somewhat, if you can, be like your own hype man. Like, I'm trying to always, um, I, I will never expect someone to like fully, fully empathize with, you know, m- with what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. But I think there's always like, us as humans, we always like, we, we feel the same thing. We feel sadness, t- like different levels of sadness. And, um, and we can all relate to that. And I think um, definitely like talking with you guys and talking with my mentors and my other friends, it's always like, I, it's it's not just me, it's like a team effort too. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, a, um, you know, I, I didn't come, I didn't get to where I am because I, I worked hard. It's like also I worked hard, but I also had great people around me who gave me a lot of wisdom, who helped me through things, who um came on a shoot for like no reason just like wanted to support me and Mm. wanted to jump in it's like and then when i think about these things it's like man everything was moving so fast at that time and why didn't we just like kind of savor that moment Mm -hmm. so i'm always like wait i'm moving too fast like what's going on oh Mm. that's fun so i i I do this thing where i'm like wait hold on hold on guys thanks i took a photograph (laughs) (laughs) took a mental photo mental photo photo, and i just was like that's what i started doing now it's just like you know be weird have fun like mm-hmm. try new things and you know i think there's n- nothing stopping you but you you know mm, at some point yeah yeah i think just yeah your your ability to be present and um yeah just kind of let things be versus trying yeah. to force things to yeah. feel like what it what it should be ba- mm-hmm. based off of where you're at in life and you know i think you know when i think about the the evolution of um, I don't even want to say just myself, the way that we all evolve. I look at everybody in this room. Mm-hmm. I've seen, I've known uh, at least Chad and Anthony for a long time. I haven't known you as long, but even from the last conversation, which mm-hmm. was two years ago, I'm already seeing your evolution, yeah. but I've seen everybody evolve. Um, you know, we were these bright eyed guys. We're like, dance is everything. <laughs> we just want to be on TV. And we Why am I afraid of what Ben's about to say? <laughs> and then he became... <laughs> <laughs> I hate these guys now. No, but I mean, you know, we were, we had these like very simple, like all we want to do is just, you know, create and dance and session and put out dope stuff mm-hmm. and make videos and perform on stages. And then now it's, you know, like I want, I want some new skills, like, you know, age is setting in and sure dance is always going to be a part of i'll speak for myself now i feel like dance is going to be a part of my life forever yeah. until the day that i physically just can't do it mm-hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to do it on a professional level and 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 choreographing and teaching but i'm like mm-hmm. what if it's just me dancing in my living room by myself if it's yeah. just that 
or if it's just me occasionally going to take a class by myself because that's the yeah. thing that I find to be enjoying. Um, you know, I think that's something that I I am learning to be okay with like evolving with what just is happening versus fighting mm-hmm. against it. Like, no, but I'm supposed to be this and I'm known to be that. Yeah. And I don't want, I'm not comfortable with me not being known for that anymore. Mm-hmm. But then also with that, it's like, well, that thing has also given me access to these other things that I can learn yeah. about now that, you know, these other things are now much more interesting to me than they once were before. Because yeah. now, like now that I'm here in this room, you know, oh, wow, I didn't know what this this sculpture can do. And like, can yeah. I can I play around with this thing? And so I think just that natural evolution, but it all comes with being present mm-hmm. and being self-aware and knowing like this is what I need and this is what now I find to be um, something that fuels me. And yeah, I mean, look at where we're at with the podcast. I think if you would have asked us even four years ago, <laughs> like, what's a podcast? What's a, what's a podcast? And, and then like, why would we even want to do one? Yeah. And then we realized the power of storytelling. And, and mm. you know, this is this is kind of a selfish thing that we're doing. Yeah. We, we, we get to talk and we get to bring in people who are doing and who have done things that we admire but then also get to exchange the stories of how our mindsets are now evolving. And then, you know, hopefully these stories go out and then reach mm-hmm. people who are who are listening yeah. and, and hopefully help people. I always feel like with a lot of like um, what I do is like when I when I'm like feeling really stuck and inspi- like uninspired, like I'm not I used to like search for songs and sounds and like, you know, that's that type of stuff. Now I actually like look at their overall career like one of my favorite artists um uh, bands lincoln park you know i yeah from hybrid mm-hmm. theory to meteora and then i think it was like what, minute uh, minutes to midnight uh like so on and so forth like just seeing actually just taking the time to actually listen through the whole like all of their albums and then seeing the growth of their sound and their messages mm-hmm. like eminem too i remember when he was doing um uh like uh will the real some shady please stand yeah, up yeah. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah like to um and then to what he is now like it's i think when i see like how did they find peace within all this like how like how did how did they grow um i remember when uh blink 182 and travis barker just came into blink and then uh he was uh and then now he's doing things for machine gun kelly producing for like every artist now you know, and then I was like listening to a couple of interviews and he's just always just like, he just, he just likes, he just likes drumming. He likes producing. He likes creating. It's a real you know? deal. Mm-hmm. And he just can't stay still. Like, I was like, there's something about that. Um, I don't know the full details of everything, but it's just like, I think it's kind of, I guess what I, what I thought was that childlike wonder. Mm. I was like, just, just create something. And then yeah. like, kind of just, I think for us doing business now we're just like okay what's the next hit okay what's the next content mm. piece we have to put up oh my gosh didn't get enough likes what was wrong with it you know maybe there's nothing wrong with it maybe it's just like sometimes the algorithm sucks or hmm. you know time of the day some people are just weren't online yeah and it's just kind of like how about not looking at the numbers for a bit just be proud of it be happy with it put it up there don't worry yeah, about feel what, what you say. feel yeah. Yeah. yeah and like for me, it's more that like when I go through my feet, I'm like, wow, I did something like that. Oh, that was really cool. Wait, can I still do that? Oh, okay, I still can. <laughs> Wait, can I do that? I can. It's like, <laughs> and then when I go back into my older music, it's basically me, like, wow, this is how I was feeling. Like my last uh, yeah. album Z, um, there's two songs. One was called Done Thinking, and the other there's another one called Don't Dance, about the same person. Done Thinking was written after a breakup and I was like, you know, a mess. Went to the studio, I was talking to my producer, like, I spoke with my ex. And then we wrote the song, like, I won't be done thinking about you. Mm, Nice. And then fast forward, uh, I think maybe like six months later, um, I wrote the song called Don't Dance. And um, it's about all you want is my money and my attention. I don't dance with you. Like, you know like get out of my face Mm. and it's like seeing that growth for myself it's like it's it's selfish but it's like i i needed to do that for myself to tell that's not selfish at all that's that's artistry right to create from a place of honesty and and relevance and 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 whatever's authentic and organic in that moment Mm. so uh this is 2021 
ish around yeah. that time i saw you were on some dance show the mass dancer, dancer yeah and, oh, that and, was and true. you were you were not singing at all you were yeah. just straight up dancing and i thought that was cool because i mean you know from what i've seen you 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 sing you're more so performing your music mm -hmm. and then the dance is kind of the i don't want to say the accessory but kind of the, yeah. yeah the secondary thing yeah. but then you were like i am the dance i'm the focal point of this <laughs> performance and you yeah. had multiple form performances where you were like hella dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I did that show because like, well, the, the opportunity came in and I was all like, I'm not a dancer. Like I, I'm not like a professional dancer. Like I, I have all these like, again, anxieties and insecurities with my dancing too. And I only just learned dance because like, not only like did I need it for my job, but like I also just like wanted to learn more. I'm like, oh, that's a cool group. What is that? Oh, that's house. Okay. Oh, that's that's contemporary. Like, what's what's that about? Mm -hmm. You know, like I would just be curious and just dabble in a little bit of everything. But like I know that there are other like entertainers out there that actually have like trained backgrounds and all these things. And um, but they're like, oh no, no, Amber, you don't need to worry about anything. You know, it's gonna be like a, an array of people. And I'm mm -hmm. like, uh so like to come to the decision to do it what what was like my like okay let's do this like thing in my head was screw it fuck it like just, yeah. just why, why who cares who cares like i need to i want to challenge myself and um i know that like um i have like all my friends uh who like uh who have been dancing with me for years and who've danced with me on stage are like, no, Amber, you kill it all the time. I'm like, no, no, I don't. But I was like, you know what? How about let's, 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 let's put on some acting skills. Let's, I want to act like, you know, I am confident. I, let, mm -hmm. let, let me at least fake that confidence until I actually believe it. But also let, let's bring back in that, like that love that I had, like when I was taking class, you know, I, I didn't go to class because I like someone was forcing me to because like, you know, just oh, that's cool. Yeah, so, I just I remember seeing you randomly in a bunch of classes like, oh, Amber's here taking class. Like it was just <laughs> yeah, you were taking a lot of classes. Yeah, yeah it was though. fun. I had the like the 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 card and like I had the well, like, I, you guys have a stamp card. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, had, I had like stamp cards and card class. Like we like, built class. the studio for you. <laughs> Thank you. I know. <laughs> Yeah, that was our plan. Uh, but yeah, I, I remember just having like uh, the, those monthly like uh, like class cards for like yeah. every studio too, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to. No, no, we class. don't talk about this. Okay. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you, you bring up this uh, this notion, but I, you know, obviously we we apparently enjoy dance, so we'll talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you bring up this talk about how um, you almost have to act. Yeah. Right, you're like putting on this performance. You're like, ah, oh, I got this anxiety. I don't know if I can actually do this. I'm not really this type of person. So the best thing I can do is act that I'm the person who yeah. embodies this, mm -hmm. who owns this, who is the star, who deserves this, who, yeah. you know. And like, I don't know if there's ever been a serious, serious, important performance in my own life, in my own trajectory and career that I didn't have to do that as well. Mm -hmm. But I always just felt found and understood that that's um a part of it yeah right that that's yeah. that's some of the beauty of it you know what i mean yeah just as acting in and of itself is a t is a talent or a career or or a beautiful experience and expression mm -hmm. to embody something even if it's beyond the limitations of your natural self it's not necessarily fake in that moment yeah it is real because you did it and it existed in that moment it just uh is mental yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. yeah and that's what dictates to our own understanding whether it was real or fake or that's not who i am but yeah but at the end of the day if you're capable of acting like that and getting on stage in front of a camera or millions of people watch, that's who you are there's no faking yeah. that funk even if that moment felt unique and fleeting you know i have this thing when i'm on stage um and i get like super anxious i have to get like so uh, on um my tour that before covid i had to do this thing where i was like okay i need at least 15 minutes of quiet time no one touch me because i'm super sensitive because i'm just going yeah. through all the kinks of like my set list and then i think over the course of uh we did 24 shows um for my north american leg and uh i remember um the first song of the set list was i believe it was countdown it's like a really fun like housey uh song um carlo was it? carlo um choreographed it how sick yeah so uh we we would just kind of like uh I, I, the music would start I, it'd be like crazy and i'm like ah the show's starting i get on and then i'm all like 
And then when I start singing the first line, I'm like, wait, this is fun. Mm, mm-hmm. And it's like, but then the moment the the the, the that one section of um, like the couple songs end and it comes to a talking part, I'm like, oh, hi guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But it's like, I think to learn to be at, like knowing that accepting that it is part of the process and then also like like it's like your little like Jekyll and Hyde but uh, what, what, which one's the bad guy I think Dr. Hyde D- no D- D- I, have, I don't whichever know whichever one the bad Mr. Hyde because it's Dr. Jekyll and no, Mr. Hyde, Hyde right? oh yeah okay so the Hyde is actually like this little shy like little like the one who's hiding yeah yes. like it's like it's like I I think learning to be uh not a stranger with that side of myself mm-hmm. is now like uh was was a process as well and i think during that dance show i i remembered that it was also there's a there's a part where i also when when we get voted off um there's like the like the, the final round of like and it's mm-hmm. like you're you're solo and i'm all like wait if i get voted off i have to do a solo uh and I realized in my <laughs> decade plus of my career, I don't think I've danced alone before. Wow. So I was like, wait, wait, wait. But then, so that was another like stranger that I had to get acquainted with as wow. well yeah. within yeah. myself. And I was like, you know, in the end, I was like, whether my dance was good or bad, I'm just, I was happy that I did it for myself. Mm-hmm. And I like kind of overcame that as well. Because and, and now looking back, how do you feel about it? I wouldn't do it again. Because <laughs> 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 it's too much stress. But it was super fun because uh, um, uh, JF, who, who was choreographing and working with me uh, along with Icy, uh, those two choreographers stayed with me for hours yeah just training me because i actually just got out of court a three-week quarantine yeah, 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 yeah when i was uh when i when i jumped on that when i jumped jumped into the uh, production of the show mm-hmm. um and there i was like i'm so sorry this is really stupid of me to ask you but can you like go through the basics of this with me <laughs> this like yeah, I just yeah. For people not watching for people who can't watch i just did this Jerky, she's she's jerky. doing some cool arm stuff right yeah, now. Flailing. Tune into the YouTube to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and because, like, I don't know, I kind of felt like because people they saw they all they were like Amber, I've been a fan of you since I was a kid. I was like, so like that pressure too that like oh I have to be this you know person again this celebrity sure, yeah. this and so I had to get over it was just like I don't know just like a staircase of like mental blockage totally that I had to you. like you know bring that all down become a human again and just be like hey can you just teach me how to do this i don't know how to do it um and kind of like not freaking out i guess again faking like faking that confidence until it actually like oh wait i actually can be confident you know i think confidence is a very like it's a funny thing because you know when you say confident, I, at least for me, I have certain people who pop up in my head. That's yeah. a confident person. Yeah. That's a confident person. And I think for me, I just learned confidence is a just an accurate self-awareness. It's, it's being just, I know I'm capable of this. Mm-hmm. I know I'm not as capable of this, but just knowing where that line yeah. is. And then, and then also surprising yourself, you know, because I think when you're humble, when you're sort of like in this mode of, you know, yeah, you could be like, oh my gosh, like they, um, they've been fans of me. I need to like have this level of, I need to do execute at least to this level so they don't lose that fandom. But, you know, let's just say, you know, whatever, I'm sure they're geeking out no matter what, like, oh my gosh, I'm teaching Amber Lou, I'm fans, (laughs) um, but if they see some level of whatever we want to call it, for lack of a better term, imperfection. Mm-hmm. I don't think that makes them lose respect or they're any less level of a fan. If anything, yeah. it makes that experience more special to them because they felt now they, they're connecting. connecting yeah. You're asking them to teach me and, that. And it's yeah. relatable. Yeah, it's yeah. relatable. Yeah, it's... And then I think on any human level, when you can relate to something 
at least for me, I become a, a greater fan of, of something that I can relate to because now it's more tangible for me. Because if it's if it's so much you're on this pedestal and I'm over here and I'm just like, wow, I don't know what it's like to be that, but I'm just gonna be in awe. I think there's a there's a level of fandom there, sure. But then when I feel like, whoa, I think I'm not so far from that as as I thought I was, mm -hmm. maybe I have some hope to get there. And yeah. now I'm you're you're inspiring me even more now because I feel like that pie in the sky is not so far off. And so, you know, I think, yeah, even for us too, I think there's something that, you know, even hearing your journey and of how that was, and, you know, we've had our whatever sort of own experiences in that way. I think it's just really, it's really powerful to show vulnerability in that way and yeah. show teachability because, yeah, of course, the, them as your fans are looking to you as like, no you teach us so we're here <laughs> you know what i mean we're fans of you like no 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 I, I i'm an artist in this kind of way but dance is your jam yeah. like i got that's why you're here <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean because you i i need to learn something from you funny so. question what uh before you met any of the kindreds what did you think of the kindreds thought you guys were like super like well like organ like organized like clean and i was like i i was intimidated too but I think uh, I it was uh, I think it was when I first met John, uh, when I took his class, um, and then I, you're like, "This fool is a geek meathead." <laughs> he was he was talking about magic buttons. Yes, and that is. magic buttons. John Haas magic buttons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, now and then after hanging out with him so much uh, with uh, Malia over the pandemic and um, working out with them, it's just kind of like. I think we're just everybody's just a human. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's just a, a regular person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and then um, I think Anthony, when when I think when you hit me up um, when you were in China too, we were we were in China at the same time, and That's we right. missed each other. Yeah. Um, but like I was like, oh yeah, you guys are just people. Because <laughs> so, like so for me too, it's like when when I saw you guys, like I was like, oh like you guys are like were my dance idols too. I would I would see you guys like teach, like before the kin just formed too, like um. A lot of the choreographies that you guys had like post on to YouTube, I would be searching like crazy. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Can't dance like that, but it's fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's kind of like you know meeting people that you look up to or that you admire, and then but then it's kind of like it goes both ways too, yeah. and it's, um, it's 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 fascinating. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not even asking official yeah. compliments. I'm yeah. asking because I know that you've seen us be fools. You, you you now seen you know what I mean yeah. like yeah. You, you've been in our space in yeah. like you know places where there's no cameras no there's no rehearsals no like organized any yeah. projection of anything and and just to even touch on confidence I feel like confidence or a fun way to describe it is like the power of your own projection right mm -hmm. like what you mm -hmm. can project you can project shyness powerfully mm -hmm. be confident being shy you know what I mean but um, I'm so shy. Yeah, but but you know, <laughs> being able to person in the room, <laughs> seeing you in our close quarters and recognizing how human you you're such a uh, I don't mean this is a diss at all. Uh. You're such a regular human. It's so fun to relate with you because you're so normal considering every uh, other magnanimous thing that uh, has been projected in your career and your life and stuff like that, or or, or in your IMDb yeah. or your laundry list of awesome resume, you know, like, but the point is when we actually see each other in superhuman spaces, I feel so comfortable because of who you are as a person, not necessarily the talents that you've fostered through your career and all that, you know what I mean? So th oh, there's just something you. so powerful um and real and confident about what ben was talking about about yeah. the vulnerability about the yeah. relatability you know what i mean like the more i have that with somebody i admire maybe the more yeah. i'm inspired by them mm. i think there's always like and i really appreciate that because and i don't take that as any offense by the way because i like i i i've like i was sh thrown into the industry at 15 so it's like i kind of missed everything and i always kind of like had this like like jealousy toward my friends like how they had the freedom to go like party and you know experience life date around you know but i had a lot of restrictions a yeah. lot of like 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 i guess like a, like a what do you call this it's not it's not a like rules that like were were like actually rules like secret no secret rules no what are what are those it's called? almost like unspoken, the culture of what you were in <laughs> unspoken rules Un unspoken rules there yeah. we go <laughs> unspoken rules and i'm like and I felt so like, I guess, you know, missing home and kind of 
not knowing who I was and just everything like not speaking a language that like I was very like that I like so not speaking a language uh that I would what c words it's, it's even there. hard for me in english yeah. too yeah, I got you know you. Yeah, i'm like we got don't you. figure out three languages every three languages <laughs> every day i'm just kind of like language uh my daddy I, wants to catch a bullet with his bare hands <laughs> shout out jackie oh chan shout out rush hour <laughs> i don't know why like, i went there <laughs> you're fine um but it's kind of like um and, and not being able to express myself like fully like 100 percent because i was speaking a language that i wasn't fluent in yeah so, um and funny enough like my the majority of my career has been in a language that i haven't that that hasn't been english you know that's crazy so <laughs> like and it's like wait that's actually pretty cool that i've like had a crazy career a lot of highs a lot of lows but it's still pretty dope but it was all in a foreign language yeah like wow. if, if if someone were to shoot my my like I don't know, a dramatic, you know, doc documentary, but like super like, you know, I'm like my own entourage. It would be, so, there would be subtitles, you know? Yeah, <laughs> speaking totally. Korean the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then some throwing in like um, some of my Mandarin and then I spoke Japanese at one point too. Wow. And like, I forgot all of that. But then like being able to like, you know, just have this crazy life. I'm like, wow, that's pretty dope. But then kind of, oh, like, her celebrity and then kind of like wait am i a celebrity and then kind of putting myself in that i actually like i actually kind of like started like i, I was envious of people that were quote unquote i guess normal because normal people yeah mm. i didn't have to have the responsibilities that i i don't need these and that's like kind of like what i explored in uh my my latest album z <laughs> right now on Spotify, Apple there. Music. Stream that. Yeah. <laughs> Stream it. Well done. But like, but real talk, like this uh, episode is brought to you by Z. <laughs> <laughs> but real talk, like uh, in the song um, "Easier," um, I, I, t I I was really entertaining that in like that whole thing of just, I just wanted to stop. I just don't want this anymore. I I want to disappear and I want to hmm. be a normal person. But I don't know. I I, I think my my i call it my curious george curiosity i'm very just curious about everything mm -hmm. so whether it's you know even though i'm putting in my grind day and night for you know my music and my artistry you know the, the person down the street who's working at 7-eleven has like fucking like 12 hour shifts probably tired as hell just standing on their feet all day dealing with really annoying people you know it's like we all have our hardships and i think just because I'm in entertainment doesn't mean I can't relate to somebody like that lives, totally. up, you know, down yeah, the street yeah. from me. Yeah. So I've always just kind of like, you know, I, I don't I don't feel like I don't think I'm better than anybody else in this room or, you know, in existence. I just think I'm just one more person on this earth. Yeah. So, you know, as you're talking about your last album and, you know, it seems like this, the songs that you put on the motivation or the artistic inspiration it seemed like you were drawing a lot of that from actual life stuff you talked about mm -hmm. you know a friend that had passed away to um yeah just kind of being human and things like that and then the last time we talked to you we had spoken about you know your concept of success mm -hmm. and things like that which um if you guys are curious go back to that one and listen to that but um you know in in just talking to you now as your the grind hasn't stopped your work ethic hasn't stopped the 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 things that you're creating are continuing to come out so none of that has really changed if anything it's kind of mm -hmm. just continued maybe even more um and and like you're sort of like wanting to kind of invest back into yourself and you know mm -hmm. self-care and all that knowing that everything will come anything healthy will come out from a healthy place mm -hmm. and and i think the concept of peace is something that um you know people are search or in search of their zen or their peace mm -hmm. so rather than success how how or what do you feel is your place of peace or how do you find peace is it a practice is it something that you have to constantly remind yourself of what is the thing that um you bring into your life to give yourself peace i think number one is making sure that like what's i think peace is 
it's there. It's in me. I just, I always just push it aside. Um, which means that like, I think I know what makes me happy. It's just that I choose not to look at it as something that makes me happy. Cause like, work or responsibilities, expectations, you know, of people of me, uh, p p uh, expectations that people have of me or expectations that I have for myself. But it's like taking it as a win. Like I, uh, well, a really, really like humbling thing that like, um, a really, really, uh, big, a big experience, life-changing experience that really humbled me was when I went broke. Um, that's, this was like, I think like four years ago. Was, yeah, I had a. I met a lot of bad people. Um, trusted the wrong people, and you know, I. It and it was, it was it wasn't those like, I could see the signs, but you know, I choose to try to see the good in people. But then also, I was like, you know, no regrets. You know, I think I have to make my peace with that too. Of the things in my past, like that, I have to accept that those things did happen. I fucked up or that person fucked up. I can't like, I can't make them change, but I can, what can I do in within myself that, you know, can improve my future. So it's like making once my perspective and then also acceptance. Like I've, you know, I've definitely fucked up in the past. I've definitely, you know, made mistakes that I didn't even know were mistakes, but I can make a commitment to myself to learn and to, you know, it's okay that it's okay to make mistakes because if I'm willing to learn, I can be better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that gave me less anxiety because I would be so anxious about making that like, oh, is this a mistake? Is this a mistake? But it's like, I accept that I can make mistakes and I will be making mistakes, but I will learn from them and making that commitment. Mm. And then also perspective of, you know, Today, I got up early, I streamed, I had my Amber vocal time in the car, came to the Kinja's podcast awesome room, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having fun, <coughs> and, you know, I, I did, like, in the business sense, I did the things that I needed to do today, mm -hmm. but on, this, on the other part is, like, I'm enjoying my time. I hung out with you guys. I came for the cats. I'm still going to go upstairs and play with the cats. I'm going to want timing. you to play with the cats. <laughs> You're tired of me. So, yeah, I think it's just a mix of those two. And then making that habitual, too. Because I think one thing that I did really catch with when it within myself was that I was addicted to negativity, too. Mm, I was addicted wow. to putting myself down. I was addicted to what people were saying about me that was bad. And I just like I just kept zoning in on that. So I really had to give that boundary to myself. When I see something and I feel this trigger, stop, yeah. push it away. Were, were you accustomed to using that as like fuel? Are you, were you that type of person? I think half yes, but also it hurt me at the same time. Totally, and that, yeah. I think that was like a like a like a a backhanded thing that happened that yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, but I, then I you know, that. it was like a, a like a soft scratch that became a wound. Yeah. Wow. So it's like kind of really. Like we will always all have like our own bad habits within ourselves. And it's just like, okay, when you catch it, how are you going to like, okay, take a break for, take a break. And then how, how are you going to rebuild yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think for me, like go going to therapy was a huge thing. That's yeah. a huge step for me. I was scared, you know? Um, but I, I, I unpacked a lot of bags. I still got a lot of bags to unpack I and, hate. You know, I'm not ashamed about it. And, you know, I think mental health is super important. Um, and with everything going on right now, like with your body, your mental is super important as well because it's what makes us do this and come to the Kinch podcast room. <laughs> <make an> awesome <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I think uh, I think also just one thing at a time. Yeah. too. I think you i i'm horrible with multitasking can you multitask like not, i'm not know? good at it man i'm not good well, what's yeah. the thing of the polyrhythms oh things? yeah like when you do i can't i suck at that i have to really just go one at a time i'm suck at that <laughs> i'm suck at that. <laughs> yeah that's the polyrhythm that's yeah. where we stop right there that's, that's work on the foundation poly really, vocab it's so yeah poly yeah. vocab that's yeah. what i do now <laughs> but it's like it's i know that you know i'm always gonna 
have my anxious moments and mm -hmm. I know that like, okay, I got really excited and I started slurring my words, but I'm like, okay, chill. So. Well, uh, speaking yeah. of anxious moments, we're about to get into a lightning round here. So oh, there, wait, there's lightning rounds? Yeah, yeah. Our job is to make you feel We're anxious. gonna just keep the anxiety up, but this one will be fun, hopefully. We'll see. Here we go. Lightning round. Three, two, one. What's the last thing you ate? What did I eat today? Wow. This is a very productive lightning what, round. What? Uh, wa <laughs> water? Water. water. I'll take what it. did I eat? Water. I'll take it. It's right in front of you. It's there. Holy crap! I chewed it a bit. What's the last game you played? Kirby and the, the, uh, and the Forgotten Land. What's your favorite game of all time? Kirby and the Crystal Shards. Wow. Who, who is your childhood hero? My sister. Favorite anime? Full Metal Alchemist. Favorite character in the anime? Ow. Okay. Least favorite anime. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I have one. That makes sense. Yeah. Who oh. who who measures shit? With okay, actually favorite? no. It's not the okay. It's the the. There's a part in Bleach that I do not like. What part? The vampire part. Oh, <laughs> I could never get into Bleach. Is that I, true? Is I, that I could crazy? only got it. I only got into it when when, when they went to Soul Society because then it became mm. interesting. Mm. I'm like, okay, like, now we're getting. I got to like so episode so nine and then I just I fell off again. I did it twice. <laughs> oh, Every time I get to the vampires, that's when I fall off. I was like, I can't do this. All right, after vampires. Glad we talked about that. Right? <laughs> if you could have any skill that you do not currently possess, what would it be? Cooking. Okay. Wow. Okay. I suck. Favorite boba drink. <clears throat> honey lemon, uh, honey lemon black tea, half sugar, less ice, grass jelly, honey boba. Well, that's not delicious. Where is this from? Uh, you can uh places that I would recommend getting it at is at Half and Half Tea House, uh -huh. and then there is Volcano Tea House on Sawtell. Oh yeah, I love Volcano. Your least favorite song that you were on. That you did, that you created. Oh, there's so many. Least favorite. Least favorite. Yeah. Three million years. Three million years. <laughs> one you guys were playing when I walked in. <laughs> hey, for, that's good one. Call, guys, good that call. was really good. Good call. Yeah. The that fact that we did that, and that's your in. least favorite. That's <laughs> funny. Uh, what's your favorite? My favorite. Um, She's like the one you weren't playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, cur okay, currently released favorite, I think, would have to be. Uh, mm. Hmm. This is a horrible lightning round. It's okay. This is like a light drizzle we, round. Yeah, it's like a storm. It's a it's a storm. You know, sometimes the the thunder and the lightning. It's a concept. Yeah. <laughs> Not it's the Santa Ana. No, Santa Ana winds are strong. Never mind. <laughs> they cause a lot of fires out here. Yeah, um, I think uh, my f favorite song probably. I think "Stay Calm" is as of right now, feeling wise, my favorite. Okay. Might change tomorrow. <laughs> okay, it's okay. You're an artist. That's what happens. <laughs> what is a dream collab? You don't have to say Kendra's, but like most people do. But we're down. I mean, if you want to do it, yeah. we're down. Well, in the dance world, dance world, I was talking with John about this. I was like, I want to do something with you guys, but I don't know what. We're gonna do. Oh, no. We're gonna do a routine to three million. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are our terms. Only. Why if it's did that I release song. that song? <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Uh, dance wise, yeah. Um, Sora, obviously, I want. I dealt, she's been training me since like the beginning of my like my what do you call it my my, my exodus. I don't know whatever. Just my, you f yeah. doing your thing. My your thing. Own, your own um, thing. Yeah. And but I I need to train more. So until I, I I need to train more to even do something with you guys actually. But I I need to you know. Get Don't worry, we're we're equally rusty. Uh, All right, uh, favorite fictional character that you relate to most? Stitch. What? Stitch. I love Stitch. So you just yeah. like a little blue alien? Don't yeah, really I'm a speak little English. blue alien. I roll. I can bite my butt and roll around in circles. <laughs> wow. Why do you relate to Stitch? Um, I don't know. I just feel like I'm. I I can't, I feel like. I just feel like an I feel like an alien. You know, I just feel like kind of left out a lot. I don't feel like I fit in. 
sometimes. Le- less now than before. Yeah, but. there's one version of this podcast where that gets really sad, the way that you just said that. But I'm totally with you on this one. Like, I yeah, you're an alien. There's, there's, a, there's that one scene, though. It's like, it's like I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 this, oh, oh, this is getting like, sadder like, the yeah. second we go yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah pretty much that i don't know it's just like i and i feel like i have all these like it's not like like it's not like it was it, well talents like for stitch you know he has all these powers i have all these things i just can't control and i like that's you know, right yeah. you know I end up destroying things sometimes or, and that's know. what made but him he's cute perfect. and cuddly but he's cute and, oh God. <laughs> i have a i have a joke with that with my fans and I'm, i know that's i am I not it. cute and cuddly <laughs> fuck cute and cuddly oh wow <laughs> i feel very strongly about not being cute and cuddly. Right. Okay. No. Yeah. Amber is just straight. cuddly, everybody. <laughs> just cuddly. Leave the cute exactly. out. Exactly. Setting the record straight. Um, in the movie about your life, who would you have play you? Oh, wait. What? Oh, man. <laughs> Probably haven't thought much about this one. Whoa, but, you know, on. we're just going to hit you with it. I've definitely heard that question be thrown around before. I've never thought about it for myself. Is it, it, it could, it, it doesn't have to, like. It doesn't have to be an actor. It could be whoever you want. Well, she's going to say Stitch. Watch. Well, Stitch. <laughs> Stitch play on board. Um, wow. I think I just, you just lost listeners right no. now. No. <laughs> we just gained a whole new Disney audience now. Um, I think I would like um, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell, Kristen forgetting Bell. Sarah Marshall. I think I don't know. I, there's uh, she. Uh, I fell in love with her like like her whole thing when she did uh, the Good Place. I think she oh, has yeah, a yeah, way yeah, of yeah, like yeah. really uh-huh, like uh-huh. you know bringing characters to life in her own way and making it super just like entertaining to watch. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that'd be really fun. Like I, her, I, can, I actually can really you know, see that. Like you yeah. know. I think that Veronica be, Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Be really fun. All right, Kristen Pell. That's good. What is your proudest moment? Proudest moment. I think. I think the moment I got my dog Jack Jack, because it was the first thing that I knew was like, it was there was no. I'm a very analytical person. I'd be like reading things. I was like, okay sit on it for a bit and just see how I feel. But I knew at that moment when I saw him, he was my dog. Mm. And mm-hmm. it's been the best decision I've ever made. You got him as a puppy? Love that. Yeah. Got him as a puppy. There we go. <coughs> if you could prescribe one thing to the world, what would it be? Naps. Sleep. I'm a fan I of naps. I love naps. I love naps. What kind of naps do you take? Are you like the short 15, 20 minute power napper or are you sleeping tw- like two oh, hours? Oh, sleep. I, I, I'm, I'm the bad napper. I, I sleep like two, three hours. Okay. You're yeah. like REM sleep napper. Yeah. <laughs> it's it. horrible. It. I, I, I think, but I think it's also a little bit of like when my hours are so flipped, especially when I'm traveling and I have to like stay up to do work for another country in a different time zone. It's just... I my hours become screwed up no matter what so yeah Yeah. naps do wonders i'm one of those people where oftentimes when i'm driving i'll get super sleepy and i don't try to fight it once i feel i'm like yep i need to pull over and yeah so he just starts napping in the Mm. car yeah while he's driving but i pull over and i take a nap safely on the side of a road not driving still Mm -hmm. but yeah my 15 minute 15 20 minute uh car naps while safely pulled over to the side of the road do wonders for me (laughs) um well so this season we're 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 kind of switching up the so we had we got your golden rule last time and um this season we kind of wanted to entertain a different school of thought something that we still find to be uh something that within the kinja's ecosystem things that we you know aspire to achieve things that we value the concept of mastery and most people will be humble and be like, I'm not a master of anything. I'm still a student of, of, of life and things of that nature. This is the guy right here. Anthony, if you guys are watching on YouTube, it's pulling this guy. Shout out Arnell Yoda. He gifted us with this, this guy right here. If you guys don't know, this guy's name is Bruce. Last name mm-hmm. Lee. My uncle. Anthony's uncle, long lost uncle. And uh, one of his famous quotes, he said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once. 
but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So the concept of just focusing, laser focus on one thing, but devoting mm -hmm. all your hours, all your efforts into just figuring out how to do one thing. Uh, what is the thing for you that you feel like you have mastered? Curiosity. Mm. I think I'm, I think I'm always super interested in everything. And um, I think sometimes when, I don't know, it's like, I will always ask questions. I know I'm annoying. I will always ask questions. And sometimes like I have a little bit of anxiety of asking questions, but I'm always like, but I have so many questions. Wait, how does that work? Wait, what button do you press? Wait, so you can like, like chat, like, okay, so that button goes to that thing. And then you, you yeah, and then you do the th button thing again. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to like, if yeah. I could, if I had all the time in the world, I would just ask questions mm -hmm. because I'm just curious. And like, I, I, and I'm, I, I think it's also because I want to find ways to connect with people because especially like now, you know, everybody's divided on a lot of things, but I like, I, I like having conversations. I love like riffing with, somebody else and just like tossing around this idea to this idea to this idea and like okay well we didn't weren't productive today but at least we figured out what didn't work mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i think it's that curiosity that keeps driving me to like okay learn about something new um or try something i haven't done before or like i'm curious if i you know was you know like a little bit you know not amber today could i and be confident and not be a scared little llama like, could I, <laughs> could I learn something new about myself? Mm -hmm. And I think it, it just, it's helped me discover a lot of things about not only myself, but like the world around me. And, you know, I just want to be a curious person always. Wow. You have so mastered curiosity. You know, <laughs> now that you say that that's the thing, it 100% hits like, yes, I can see that. And I think that's what you've had ever since you were a kid from being straight A student, I'm sure your parents told you this is the way, do well in school, go to the nice college, mm -hmm. and then you'll have a nice job and you'll live a happy life. Mm -hmm. And then you curiously were like, could I do music? Could yeah. I dance? Could I, you know, is gaming a thing? Yeah. Is, you know, even the show that you were talking about, like ask, ask the stupid ask the, the stupid, stupid questions. questions. And, yeah. and like that in <laughs> itself is a very... <laughs> Like, I'm curious about everything, so I'm just going to ask everything that I want to know about everything. But that's the way to learn. You'll mm -hmm. never learn if you don't ask. And asking yeah. comes from curiosity. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, just you being a person of so many talents and having having seen success in the ways that you have wanted to see it and then also still evolving um, and still in a place where you're not, you haven't yet arrived because you probably never will, you know, yeah. it's the destination that you're seeking after. And yeah, I think that's very apparent. Yeah. yeah. I think it's always, <coughs> uh, one thing that I want to like, I, I'm trying to give myself like, in like, a I guess, a an image of is like, if I'm wandering, like maybe not take it as me being lost, but like I'm curious about this and I'm just wandering to this, but I'm not lost. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. enjoying this walk mm -hmm. while I'm alive, you know? I want to... There's so many fascinating things and there's just so much to learn. Sometimes I get overloaded with, oh my gosh, I want to learn so many things. I just have no time. But I think if I, I just I think that's just where all my motivation just comes from it's mm -hmm. just trying to find the answers and learning to have fun yeah. finding those answers like an easter egg hunt yeah and I love that word choice by the way it's like to uh it's like are you lost like no I'm wandering yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. very very different and yet you know you might find the same variables I have that I'll I'll be that one wandering around the, the forest with my arms like this behind my back and just like you know the stroll, like you know, like the Asian, Asian, um, the Asian, was it Asian old man stroll? Oh is that, yeah, is that what it's called? Dude, I've been doing that. The arms are going. I love my this. Back and it's that's it just how I feels enjoy so walking. safe. <laughs> it feels so safe. <laughs> I feel safe when I do it. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, Amber, thank you so much again for driving out here oh, from course. Orange County and sitting through LA traffic to hang out with us. And and uh, as you were talking about earlier about knowing what to say no to, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> thank you for saying yes to us and hanging out. I we appreciate you know your time, but more than that. Um, just what you have to say and what you have to share. I think you have so much uh, learned wisdom over the years of your career, and then also, you know, throw the pandemic into the thing into the mix, and then learning from that, learning about yourself, learning what you value from relationships to balancing um, your work life to your own personal health and development. And then also finding times like this to be important for you to come and share your story with others because, um, yeah, I, I know there's a lot of people who look to you in a certain type of way that may not get this lengthy kind of version of you, mm -hmm. uh, which I, you know, I think we here have received a lot from. And um, yes, thank you. Thank you for just giving it all to us. And, and now this... This goes out, you know, and, and, it, and it, it it will do what it will do. And, and um, it, it's pow powerful. And yeah. Just Thank you. Thank you for, you for having that. me. It's yeah. always fun. I came yeah. for the cats. <laughs> we'll get to the cats. Well, yeah. Well, before we get to the cats, like how can people continue to follow your journey? Music's out there and there's 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 fun stuff that you're doing. There's there's good stuff out there. Plug it all. So, Okay. I'm Amber Lou on Twitter and Instagram. On Twitch, as of now, I'm still AJOL underscore llama, but all my socials will like kind of link into each other. TikTok is also Amber Lou. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> Amber Lou. A A M. I, I, I we'll, we'll find the spelling. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah we'll whatever. It. We'll, we'll plug yeah, it in. Yeah, it's there. just how you always spell your name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> i recently changed the handle so i got really confused which one wasn't changed so twitter instagram tiktok amber lou uh twitch as of now is still is still ajol underscore llama um my music is on spotify apple music every platform youtube stuff all the yeah. stuff she's not hard to find guys and i uh, will plug it all in in the show description and uh and if yeah. you have a pet Hug your pet. If you have a stuffed animal, hug your stuffed animal. If you have a pill, hug your hug your pillow. So good, so good. I don't. I don't even. I'm sitting over here. I'm kind of like just like shy guy blushing because I'm just like, <laughs> Amber, you're so cool. Why am I cool? Because like for everything you've done, like I feel like your your words specifically don't fall on deaf ears here because you're one of the most realist people for having done some of the most intense things. Thanks. Uh, so when you speak about what you speak about, I. I I'm more hyper focused and zoned in because um, I don't know maybe maybe uh, as much as you may be younger, <laughs> your journey is so profound that I, I, I find true so. inspiration from it. Thank so you. I'm really really Absolutely. hearing what you have to say, and I'm just like I'm very honored that you're yeah. here. I'm th thank you for letting me share it. It's like I always feel like my stories aren't like entertaining or like interesting, but um, I'm very I'm glad much the opposite of that. So I'm glad that you guys enjoyed riffing with me. Absolutely. <laughs> Always. We love, it. we love it. Folks, thank you guys for tuning into this episode. Uh, again, if you guys have missed Amber's previous episode, go back and listen to that. She goes into all of her origin stuff, certain things that we didn't ask in this one. We're asked probably in that one, so you'll find it over there. And if you are finding this episode for the first time, welcome and thank you for joining us. We have a lot of other episodes before this, so go back. We have a lot of other cool people who have done cool things, cool stories. If you guys are really appreciating digging what we're doing, uh, hop into your podcast platform, leave us a five-star rating if you're loving it, write us a review, say whatever, just say hi, give us some notes, give us some guests you'd want to see, um, follow us on all our socials, can just podcast, cast with a K on IG, Twitter, Facebook, we're on all that. Watch these episodes on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Kinjas. And I think that's it. I think that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for sitting and chatting and listening. Peace. Kinja peace, peace. bang. Kinja bang. Movement in the shadows. Why do you say it all Asian like that? <laughs> oh, no. I think it's so racist. Movement, 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 like movement in the shadows. Kinja bang. Movement in the shadows. You said it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said it cute. <laughs> Not cuddly. Not cuddly. No. I said it cute. Kinja no. bang. <laughs>
movement and shadows. Meow. Mm. Peace, guys. <laughs>